Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have the first part of my guides on the Cluck and Bell Farm Raid DLC. And I will have a guide on the getaway vehicles, which I'm doing right now. I'll have a guide on the uh, weapons and the best gear to use. And I'll have a guide on how to complete stealth and aggressive approach. Pretty easy. And then ultimately I think I'll have a guide on just, you know, going over the key points and, you know, every single setup mission. Uh, but anyways, let's talk about the getaway vehicles here. So what's a little bit different about this heist is that um, when it comes to the getaway vehicles, and the gear and the weapons you have a choice you go to three different locations and you don't have to go to all of them uh you can choose which ones you want to get so which ones should you get should you get a b or c and the answer is kind of simple answer is a a is the easiest to get for two reasons one it's the easiest to get there and also the easiest to drop off and two it's also the easiest to pick up once you're there so a belongs to the Maru Bonte um, Grante um, gang, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And uh, what I did the first few times that I did this is I actually went behind the garage and I shot all of them. And that's kind of what the game implies for you to do is to kill everybody the first time that you're there. But you actually don't have to do that. So I recommend to use an Armored Karuma on these missions because Armored Karuma is literally your best friend for this is like a remembers of the original heists. But anyways... All you pretty much have to do, just pull up of your Karuma and just shoot this fuse box because it's always going to be in this garage right here. I've done this mission three times and it's always in this garage unless it spawns somewhere else. This is the same place I've seen it spawn every time. You shoot this little fuse box right here. Just clear out these two guys in the front. That's it. Don't kill anybody else. It's just going to be a waste of time. You know, wasting bullets and you're wasting time. Then just get into the car and just drive off. That's all you literally need to do. Now, um, uh, this vehicle, um, you have the, uh, the Moonbeam van that spawns here and the other time you have you have a four-door sedan uh but it doesn't really matter the vehicles are randomized but this is the location that you want to get a so once you pick up the vehicle what you're going to want to do is just drive up the street go north and instead of following the gps because the ai are going to be chasing you you basically just go up this right up here might need to adjust it a little bit to get it right like i did here and all you pretty much need to do is just follow the train tracks that's it just drive there. Let's just speed this up right now. Just follow the entire train tracks. You don't have to worry about any AI um, running into you. They cannot get you up here. Drive all the way. And this literally takes you right to the garage. You don't have, have to take a street at all. It'll take you right there. Smash through the fence and deliver it. Now, there is two other getaway vehicles that you can steal. I'll show you guys the other ones. I don't recommend to steal them, but if you do want to steal them um, for some extra money, because if you do steal you, the extra two vehicles, you get $10,000 per vehicle, so you get $20,000 extra for, the, for this mission. I don't think that it's worth it, but if you want to be, do it. I'll show you how to do it. So next vehicle that we're going to be going for is we're actually going to be going for C. Um, C is the military one. I guess it's Meriwether, but they keep referring to them as a militia in this DLC. And if you're going to be using this, I recommend that you use the Vigilante. I found the Vigilante to be the best vehicle better than the uh, better than the Karuma for this. Now, you, you cannot use the Torador. I tried. Torador will not spawn in these missions. But if you own a Vigilante, you will be able to use it. The reason you want to use Vigilante is because Vigilante has Ruiner missiles. It has those missiles that are extremely accurate. They almost never miss. So what you're going to want to do, drive all the way down the highway. Now, once you get here, do not open fire on the helicopter first. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get rid of the two, these two barrage vehicles. These two barrage vehicles with the turrets, these are a massive problem. The AI have just basically perfect accuracy. They will instantly headshot you. So make sure you keep your distance from them and just fire three missiles. It takes three missiles to blow each one up. Fire three missiles at one, fire three missiles at the other one. Just so you don't have to worry about those guys pulling you up. Then turn your attention and to, to the fleet of buzzards that are around the um, the cargo bob. Shoot down each of the buzzards. All you need to do is get a simple lock on with this. The missile won't miss. Like I said, these missiles are extremely accurate. Blow up those buzzards and then just fire two missiles at the cargo bob. It'll you know crash and you get the um, you get the new vehicle here. And this new vehicle it is the the Banham Canyon. This new SUV. And at this point, you know we have basically two options. You can either a you know, go all the way down the highway, you know, gold GPS. But what I do instead is I actually take the purple route and I actually go to the train tracks. And this might seem like it's a little bit longer. I guess you could make the argument, but it's safer. Now, when you're driving down this highway, you know, have your um, armor and your snacks ready because th this highway is an absolute nightmare to drive down. And if you did the other if you did the other vehicles also, you will also have the other NPCs chasing you, depending on whose vehicle you already stole it from. If you go down the highway, they're li likely to box you in. That's why I don't like going down it. So I go down here through the country roads, because if I need to, I can just go on the hills, basically, to avoid the enemies. Drive all the way over here. Go up this same, um, you know, little ramp here. Drive. 
you know, down the tracks and put it in the garage. That's it. Uh, that is, it's pretty much done there. And that vehicle is delivered. Let me show you guys the final vehicle now. The final vehicle is at B, which the professionals control. Ironic, right? <laughs> That's the name of the gang. But anyways, uh, we're going to be going over there. And I've noticed this actually spawns in two different places. I've actually had this spawn in the parking lot behind that oil refinery where Michael dies in the non-canon ending. And then I actually had it spawn right here across the street this time. But wherever the buzzard is, make sure you look for the buzzard. Wherever you see that helicopter is basically where the vehicle is going to spawn. We go in here. You know, clear these guys out. Uh, the frustrating thing about the professionals mission is that the vehicle is pretty much just boxed in. You know, they haven't, you cannot drive in there directly. So, but what you can do is you can drive around and just, you know, shoot as many of these guys out as you can with the, uh, with the Karuma. So you see my point that I'm getting at is that both the military one and the professionals one is so much harder than, than the, uh, than the Grante one. The Grante one is just a lot easier. It's simple. And it's also, you can deliver it just much faster. So that's it. We clear these guys out. I push these kind of like these this wire out here. You can push that with your car. Get out here. You know, we got some more enemies pulling up. You know, kill them. Once those enemies are killed, you know, I'm getting into the um, the coil raider. And I've had another vehicle that spawned before this. So again, we get can get two different variants of the vehicle. And you have to make a jump. Drive out of here. And um, once, you, once you're, you know back up on the hills, just take the train tracks. That's all you pretty much got to do. Uh, that's, you know, the best way to get back because if you're getting all three vehicles like I am right here, you are going to have all three factions chasing you. You're going to have the militia chasing you. You're going to have the Grante gang chasing you. And you're also going to have the professionals chasing you. And it's just going to be a nightmare going down the highway. Just keep taking the... Uh, Keep taking the train tracks, and once you get over here, go as fast as you can. Do not crash. The reason is, is because in this area, the NPCs will sometimes spawn on the hills. There's that little path on the right side. They'll sometimes spawn on that, but once you drive past that, you know, they cannot, you know, pursue you anymore. That's pretty much it. Make sure you just follow the train tracks, and that's it. You know, all three vehicles are delivered. Now, let me just show you guys why the, the, the speed of the delivery vehicle does not matter, because I know people worry about speed a lot of times with these vehicles, but I'm telling you, speed actually does not matter. So... Once you get out of the, once you get out of the the chicken factory, uh, you are um you're gonna be basically uh doing the exact same thing regardless of whether you got spotted or not, and that is all you pretty much gotta do is just go right side here, go right immediately after you get the chicken factory, and just follow the train tracks. That's it. And you will lose the cops. It is like the easiest way to escape from the police. It's even easier than Casino Heist with Sewers. This is so easy. You cannot lose the cops here. But once you pull up to Sandy Shores, once you're in Sandy Shores, you will be able to lose the cops. The cops will go away at that point. So it is pretty easy. I want to thank my friend um, Pearson2005, also known as Mr. Professional, for actually showing me this route. Uh, I will have his channel down below if you guys want to check it, check him out. Um, he's a good friend of mine. He does both Red Dead and GTA content. Uh, make sure to check him out but he was the one who actually suggested this route to me i was originally going the other route but then i realized wow this route is actually a lot better because i was going the left side of the tracks yeah this route is a lot better you just basically drive down here and once you get off that you know just start going into the fields and once you're in the fields you will lose the cops drive all the way back up here deliver it and that's it we're pretty much done i hope you guys like that video on you know which delivery vehicle which getaway vehicle is the best to use uh, like i said a a is the best choice to use it's the closest and it's the easiest to get all you pretty much have to do is just pull up you know with your karuma shoot those two guys in the front shoot the fuse box get in the vehicle drive it on the on the train tracks drive it all the way there and then once you're exiting just drive in the train tracks, follow the train tracks, right side. Once you're in Sandy Shores, you know, get off the train tracks, drive in the fields, lose the cops, easily delivered, and that is pretty much it. So again, I will have a guide on the best weapons and gear to use, and I'll have a guide also on how to get through the mission stealth. So thank you guys for watching. If you find this video helpful, do drop a like, and make sure to check out my friend also, um, Pearson, Mr. Professional, down below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.